Since posting the first in this stream of videos, I keep seeing the same comment over and over about my mistitling of the series. None of these were actually caught on film though. Title says caught on film, yet I see no footage of the accidents. And there was a staggering amount of those who really wanted to see a video based on accidents that you could easily look up or that I'd be able to show on screen. So here you go. For this part, we will be taking a step back from the usual Hollywood onset film accidents to talk about a death that was caught on live television. I hope you're all ready for today's story. So without further ado, let's get to an actual disturbing accident caught on film. As with all my videos in this series thus far, this video would not have been possible without our wonderful sponsor, G Fuel. You all already know the drill with G Fuel. Zero sugar, low calorie, and packed with flavor. I don't know what it is, but their Pac-Man Power Pellet flavor has had an absolute chokehold on me. So much in fact that I'm going to make it on camera to show how easy it is. Just fill a bottle or shaker with 12 to 16 ounces of water, pour in one scoop, shake and enjoy it is that easy the tubs are extremely bang for your buck getting you around 40 servings per tub and if you're looking to get more of a soda bite from the drink then you should look into their energy cans i've since been drinking their shiny splash flavor which i'm always able to find at the mall next to my house so check out the link below and remember to use code theorist for 20 percent off of your entire order I cannot thank G Fuel enough for giving me the time and space to create the videos that I want. So if you want to support a sponsor that clearly cares about their creators, then look no further because in my experience, I just haven't had a better sponsor than this one. So thanks again to G Fuel for sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, let's jump into the unforgettable story on today's video. A good rivalry sparks something within all of us that just cannot be recreated. Whether it be your favorite sports team, favorite player, or even just a good old fashioned collision path that builds up over the course of years. Rivalries at their core are meant to entertain us and fuel that desire to see someone overtake another in the heat and passion of battle. But sometimes that rivalry can be taken too far and turn into something far more sinister. This was the case in 1962 as two boxers were set on a direct path with a head-to-head -head showdown being clearly inevitable. Those two fighters were Benny Kid Perrette and Emil Griffith III. Perrette was born in 1937 in Cuba and attained a somewhat successful boxing career throughout the 1950s and the 1960s. Benny Kid Perrette was well known for his aggressive fighting style, specifically notable for his ability to take quite a beating and still come out swinging to win most of his fights. Winning himself the welterweight title in a rematch against Don Jordan, another welterweight champion from the 1960s. The winner by unanimous decision and new welterweight champion of the world, Benny Kidd Perrette. Having previously lost to Jordan, Perrette managed to secure a victory, claiming the title for himself. Now being the welterweight champion, he would then have to defend his title on April 1st of 1961, where he fought Emil Griffith in Madison Square Garden, which would be the first of three encounters that the two would have. A close match ensued with Perrette prevailing as the reigning champ until the pair met once again the same year on September 30th of 1961. This time, Emil Griffith won by knockout in the 13th round. A pivotal point that marked the beginning of what could have been a truly great rivalry. That is, until their inevitable third encounter, which would leave one of them not just defeated, but dead. Perrette 
is stretched out in the corner just above us and placed on a stretcher. There's a bit of context going into their third match that I feel is necessary to understand why, at least in the footage, things seem to go a certain way. The first bit of information that's important to note is who exactly the referee for their match was. The match was to be on March 24th of 1962, with Ruby Goldstein as the ref. Leading up to the fight, Goldstein is reported to have been hospitalized weeks before the bout. This is important because it is an added factor as to what may have caused this tragedy to happen. Many point to Goldstein as one of the reasons for a fighter passing away in the ring, pointing to the fact that he chose to continue being the ref regardless of him clearly not being in the best condition to handle such a high stakes match. You'll see exactly why soon, but just before that, we need to touch on the emotions that drove this rivalry from a friendly competitive banter to just a straight up hostile situation. Allegedly, Perret called Griffith a homophobic slur, which greatly angered Emil and caused a fight to break out where Emil's coach had to pull him away to stop any commotion from continuing on. Keep in mind that at the time, there were rumors of Emil Griffith being gay, and this was the 1960s, where that kind of thing getting out could actually affect your life. You'd risk being shunned from society in all aspects, so this was not something to take lightly. That one comment added so much unnecessary tension to an already intense fight, and those were the storylines leading up to this event. It was the finale to close off a trilogy of intense encounters. Perrette wanted his revenge after losing their second clash, and Griffith, well, some might say that he was fighting to defend his title, but I think most of us know that he was fighting for so much more, especially after what Perrette said to him at the weigh-in. All that was left was to simply wait until March 24th, which for these two, couldn't come fast enough. And so, the match was underway. Now just so you can keep up with the footage, I'm going to tell you right now that Emil Griffith was the one that was in the black trunks and Benny Perrette was in the white trunks. For the beginning few rounds, it was looking like Emil Griffith was going to easily defend his title. That was until in one of the later rounds, Benny Perrette started landing a few good punches that tipped the scale in his favor. As they both trudged on to the 12th round, you could tell both were getting increasingly tired with all of their movements slowing down. There was one burst of energy coming out in round 10 from Emil Griffith, but that winded right back down to almost no movement from either party out of sheer exhaustion. It's ironic because the commentator even had this to say when round 12 started. This is probably the tamest round of the entire fight. If only he knew what would happen in a mere few seconds after that comment. Emil Griffith appeared to knock Perrette down unconscious, and at first, it was a great victorious moment. Griffith had just triumphed over Perrette, who had previously insulted him in front of thousands. The crowd went wild and all seemed normal, except for those in the corner with Perrette. As time ticked on, more and more attention slowly shifted away from the victor Emil Griffith to the now lifeless Benny Perrette that hadn't moved a single inch since being struck with the flurry of punches. Production tried their best to conduct business as usual, and in what is now known as a very untasteful move, they still announced Emil Griffith as the winner, as Benny Perrette was quite literally fighting for his life just a few inches away. Luckily, Emil Griffith was not a bad person. He didn't even want to relish in his victory. As you can see from the footage, he immediately went over to check on how his opponent was doing, showing a ton of concern over whether or not Benny Perrette was going to be okay. The team had to even forcefully move Griffith away so they can get on with the production, but you can tell from the look on his face that he's not even present with his victory. Uh, all he really cares about right now is whether or not Perrette was going to live. And you know from what I said earlier before I started this story that Perrette, unfortunately, did not make it. 
He was announced dead days later in the hospital with the cause of death being brain hemorrhages. And this was a tough situation for everybody. Uh, this moment weighed on Griffith for basically the rest of his life as many pointed to him as the main reason for the death. I honestly don't see it like that. He was in the moment of his match and he did what any other boxer would do when they are face to face with an opponent up against the ropes. He fought his heart out. It was never his intention for this to happen and based on his reaction afterwards, I'm only further convinced of this. Majority of people that now look back on the story blame the referee for this accident. Based on the fact that you can physically see just how unresponsive Perret is as the punches are being thrown, it said a total of 20 punches were thrown without a response from Perret before the ref stepped in and stopped the match. With many believing that the ref should have stepped in after like 5 or 6 punches, but again, I, in hindsight this choice is obvious, but I don't think this is any one specific person's fault. Like many of these incidents, it's a perfect storm that creates these situations. You know, maybe if Perrette hadn't made that comment, Griffith would have gone easier. Or if there had been a different ref in the mix, maybe things could have ended differently, but we don't really know. These 20 seconds of his life weighed on Emil Griffith for nearly 40 years before he was able to get closure. In a touching moment, Emil Griffith met Benny Perrette's son 43 years after the fight where Griffith was finally given enough to move on from the situation. But I want you to know that it's, um, there's no hard feelings here and... Uh, Thank and you. Thank you, sir. I didn't go in there to hurt no one. I know. But things happen. <laughs> 43 years of mental suffering just lifted off his shoulders. Let me know what you think of this story below. I've heard of this story a few times before, but I never really looked into it. Coming from a family that loves boxing, it was just a staple story that would get brought up all the time. Uh, occasionally, whenever we would drive the conversation towards just obscure events in boxing. So I knew of this, but I didn't know the extent of the rivalry or the fact that the person actually died in the ring, like right there in person. And the fact that the ref also had like some stuff going on there's so much gray area in this at least in my opinion that i'm just curious to see what others think about this one and that will bring us to the end of today's video thank you guys for watching this um it's been really cool making this switch over to like this more i guess like atmospheric style i guess uh, it's been super Super cool. I've had a lot of fun doing this. Um, yeah, this has been awesome. I wanted to give a massive thanks to everyone who has been supporting me recently. Um, it's really hard for me to make these videos and not come off as like, um, I guess, just chilling out over people dying. It, it, I always feel uncomfortable making this kind of stuff. So I always try to pick stories that we can learn something from or have some kind of a good ending to it. Um, but yeah, I will have more stuff on the Patreon that is just for morbid curiosity's sake. I know a lot of people just watch this channel just to get like their, um, you know, that little thing inside of them fulfilled, the whatever desire it is, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone for the recent support because I've noticed a lot of, uh, a lot more support recently, which has been super, super awesome. Um, and, you know, with that said, we'll move on to the real awesome loyal supporters of the channel, the Patreon members. Thank you guys so much. If you guys are on screen, honestly, um, thank you guys. It's It's been super awesome. Um, planning some more series and uh, special mer merch drops that are going to be exclusive to Patreon. So I'll be talking more about that in the future. Uh, it probably won't be for like a few months. I'm trying to find... Right now, specifically, I'm trying to find um, like a beanie manufacturer because uh, obviously I wear so many beanies in my videos. I should definitely have one for sale, but I want to make sure I have one that's like actually of quality and not just something to make a quick buck. <laughs> you can literally see I have beanies in both of these. <laughs> I love beanies. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Uh, thank you all um, for just being amazing. Uh, it's been awesome being able to do content for my job. I've I've been 
having the best few months on, the, on my on the platform as of late and um yeah you guys don't even you, you don't even know what i have planned for the next few months and, and it's gonna be so awesome uh, i'm literally like so excited <laughs> you can probably hear it in my voice <laughs> but yeah anyways uh with all of that said i will see you all in the next video thanks for watching